Hello friends, this is Durga again from IT University. Um, we are talking about the Pivotal Web Services and Cloud Foundry. Um, uh, we are talking about services and we have already deployed uh, a, a web application using PHP um, uh, and we have integrated with MySQL service. And now we will see how the service can be used uh, with uh, with the Spring application. As we have seen earlier, we need to have the Spring application uh, cloned onto our desktop. If you want, you can go back and look at the video. And then you have to run MVN package and then you can do the push like this. Okay, instead of random root, I will give some uh, uh, custom name which is unique, which will generate unique uh, route so that it can run so I'm deleting this random route and hotels uh, dot cff dot io is already used so we have to give some unique name I am giving hotels ITV which stands for IT varsity and this is the target jar file which we will use and hit enter it will deploy the spring application onto the PWS which you can see by going to PWS and click on development click on sign in and you can see this hotel site is being pushed to the uh, pivotal web services using cloud foundry so let us wait until it is pushed and we will uh, validate and then we will try to use the MySQL service for this uh, uh, Spring application. Meanwhile, we will go to the Git account. Which is, yeah, it's here, Pivotal Enablement and go to Hotels. and uh, look at the code so this is built using spring boot which is the uh, latest framework in spring which will automate so many things um, uh, internally i am also not master in that area uh, but uh, if you are surprising where uh, the jdbc code is um, it, it is all uh, uh, it, it will be generated by the spring boot framework when when the application is deployed um, all, uh, when the application is deployed. So you don't need to worry about writing all those JDBC codes um, as long as uh, um, you, you adhere to the standards of the uh, Spring Boot framework. Okay, uh, especially in this uh, case, it will use the concept called uh, uh, auto reconfiguration. Once we, uh, uh, we change the service from HSQL to MySQL, it will automatically uh, do the reconfig reconfiguration internally. You, know, you don't need to do that. That is the uh, magic of the Spring Boot framework. Okay, by now the application should be up and running. And you can uh, go here and uh, copy this link. Sorry, copy this hotel site TV link. And uh, go to config props or config properties and you can see that it is using hsql to connect to the database hsql is the in memory database which will be um, uh, taken care by the spring boot itself if you don't specify jdbc and if you want to connect to the database it will use hsql internally and it will take care of whatever you are trying to do now we will create a, uh, or we will bind the existing service uh, to the uh, existing Spring Boot application and we will see what will happen internally. So to bind the service, you have to click on the app name and then click on services. Right now there are no services associated with it. You can also look at environment variable and you can see the VCAP services environment variable is empty and VCAP application give all the details about the um, hotel site TV application including URI, the name of the application etc. So now we want, we need to uh, bind a service. So click on the services and click on bind a service 
you can either uh, select existing service or you can create a new service from the marketplace. So in this case, we already created ITVersity DB for uh, a PHP application, uh, which is nothing but a MySQL service. If you uh, if you want to know how it can be done, you can go to the playlist PCF immersion, and here you can see how these. Uh, um, uh, how we can actually connect our application to MySQL by creating the uh, service and binding with the application. So in this case, as the service is already there, we are trying to just uh, bind it. Click on bind. And uh, once it is bound, you can see here it is giving a tip saying that run see a free stage command uh, from the uh, command prompt. So, so far if you look at CF uh, and hit enter, you can see the help. Under apps, you can see many commands. CF apps will list the commands. CF app will give the status of the command. Push will actually upload the files, um, uh, download the build packs, um, uh, build the droplet, and then start the service. Uh, so everything will be taken care by push. When you actually bind the service, you don't need to re-push again. Uh, it, it, it will take a little bit longer time. To reflect the uh, configuration changes such as uh, binding the service, you just have to run the restage. Once you restage, automatically it will be using the new service. Okay. Even now you can go online and uh, uh, refresh uh, this URL of config props, the endpoint config props and you can see it is still accessing HSQL even after binding the MySQL service to uh, the hotel site TV application. Now what we will do, we will go to the command prompt and then do cf restage and hit enter. We have to give the app name also, app name is hotels minus ITV and hit enter. So we will see what it actually does at the restage. It is not uploading the files, it will not upload the files, but it will download the build packs only step that is missed is uploading the file and then it is building using the uh, new version and also you will see something called spring auto reconfiguration if you want to understand what is spring auto reconfiguration you can google it and you can uh, get enough information in the spring documentation about spring auto reconfiguration so it uses that concept of uh, auto reconfiguration and rebuild the um, uh, environment which is nothing but a droplet and then it will try to start the uh, uh, container um, uh, with the new service integrated uh, with Hotels ITV application. Now the application is started and if you go to the URL here and refresh it, instead of HSQL you should see MySQL. It is still showing HSQL, let us see. It is done. And now let us refresh it. Okay, it's let me look at the endpoint again. Yeah, config props uh, will reflect uh, the environment uh, um, when it is actually uploaded for the first time. Uh, so to actually get the current uh, configurations, you have to uh, use env endpoint. And then if you see here, you can see the MySQL details here. Okay, so you can see the uh, URL. Uh, which consists of the host name, uh, database name, so uh, username and password everything will be uh, here. You can look at the credentials URI, you can look at the VCAP application uh, name, uh, etc. And also if you go here and uh, refresh the services, uh, sorry environment variables, you will see VCAP services pointing to MySQL JDBC. So this is how you can actually um, uh, integrate um, uh, the services with Spring based applications also. Now we have integrated the MySQL service with the Spring based application 
and hence whatever uh, data you are trying to fetch will be preserved in the database like it happened with the PHP. So this is it about the services. We have covered quite a bit. We have uh, uh, created a MySQL service and integrated with both PHP uh, and simple uh, Spring Boot application. Uh, you can uh, use any other uh, data source as a service which is available in the marketplace and you can start using it. Your uh, services from marketplace will be hosted on different cloud uh, environment and your application should be able to talk to them and then you can um, uh, you can deploy your applications um, uh, which serves the transactions also um, which will be persisted in the database. That being said, I hope you are enjoying the content on the channel. If you like this video, please click on the like button. If you want to provide the feedback, please use the comment section of the video. If you have any technical questions, go to Stack Overflow and raise the questions in Stack Overflow with appropriate tags. If you want to discuss further on cloud and virtualization, please join my LinkedIn group uh, called uh, ITVersity, uh, Cloud and Virtualization Infrastructure. And finally, if you are not subscribed to my channel yet, please do so. You will get to see a lot more content like this over time. Thank you. Bye.